In this video, we're going to carry on setting up more of our version control, and this time we're going to use it remotely using a website called GitHub. In the last video, we set up local repositories to use where we could save version control on our local computer. So the benefit of that is that you can go back and make changes to your project and revert it to previous states, and you do have a local backup on your computer as well. But the downside is it's stored in the same folder on your computer. So if anything happens to your project, all of your backup is gone. When also using GitHub with this, you'll have a remote offsite backup copy that's stored in a different location. So if anything happens to your computer, you have another copy available. On top of that, it does help to allow you to work with multiple people where you can work on the same project remotely and then merge your changes together. And one other big benefit is even working on your own project, if you have multiple computers, such as a desktop and a laptop, this will allow you to keep current on both of them using the same project. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is go to github.com, and there's a link below in the description if you need it. You'll just need to register here. This is a completely free account. So just go ahead and register. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna sign into mine here. Okay, so now I'm signed into my account. Yours is going to look very similar. You just won't have any history here. So you can see these are the last few projects I worked on here. This is a really common website used to showcase your work, make portfolios, apply for jobs, things like that. So you may want to take some time to go through and set up a profile with all of your info. I'm not going to cover any of that, but it is pretty self-explanatory there. What we want to do here is make a new repository or a new project. So I'm going to go up to the plus sign here and just click new repository. And now it's going to give you the owner, which is yourself, your account, and then you can put in a name. So this can be any name you want. I'm using this for the same project, so I'm just going to put Astraos. And I'll tell you if it's available. You can put a description here. So I'm just going to put uh, space base building roguelike game. Now the important thing here is you can set this to be either public or private. If you set this as public, it won't allow anybody to make changes to your project, but anybody will be able to see it and download it. So that's something you can use for like a resume or to showcase work or work with other people. But when it's a personal project or some kind of private project, you wanna probably set this to private. Another important thing to mention with public, when you put it as public, anybody can access that and download it. So you need to make sure anything included in there, you have rights to actually distribute those files. So even a lot of files that you find online to use in your game can be completely free, even for commercial use. So a, a good example is like animations from Mixamo, um, models from various websites, assets from the Uni Asset Store that are free. Even though they're actually free for you and you're allowed to use them commercially, a lot of those do not give you permission to distribute them. So that means you can't put them publicly for somebody else to download. So make sure you're aware of that before you make something public. For this one, I want this game to be private. It's only going to be me working on it. And then you do have some options here to add a readme file or a git ignore file. We don't want to do any of this. We're just going to leave this as is because all we want to do is make this repository and then we're going to upload everything from our source tree. So I'm going to click create repository and now that's created and it gives us a link for it here. So I'm just going to copy this link and that's all we need to do in GitHub. So now we go back to source tree and this is where we have our project here. So we have our first commit. And we're going to want to push this onto the GitHub website. So now we need to actually set up our source tree to know how to communicate with GitHub. So to do that, let's go up to the top here and click on remote. And it says you don't have any remotes which have extended integration settings configured. So let's click on settings. Now this is going to give a window where we can add a remote. So let's click on add. And in here for remote name, I'm just going to type in GitHub and then we want to paste in our URL. So click OK. Now let's click OK again. And now let's click on push. And we're going to see our project in here. So push to repository GitHub. And it's got our, our file here, astraos.git. So let's hit push. Oh, and we just need to check this box here that we're going to push this one. And let's click push. 
Okay, and we get an error. And this, the first time I ran into this, this actually caused me a lot of issues figuring out how to get GitHub working with source tree. So I just wanted to show this route first. So we're getting this error. So in this error message, it is basically telling us what it wants us to do here. So please use a personal access token instead. And it does have a link where you can get some more information. So I'm just gonna close that and let's go back to our GitHub window. Now, if you go to your account, click in the, the top right corner, go to settings. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, you're gonna see developer settings. If we click on that one, there's a link for a personal access token. So if we click on that one, it gives us an op option here to generate a personal access token. So when we click on that, we can put a note. So what this token's for, I'm just gonna put source tree and you can set how long. So if you wanna be very secure, you can set it for shorter. I'm gonna set it to never expire. Okay, and then we just wanna check all of these here. So you, you probably don't need all of them, but I just like to add it just so it's done and I'm not gonna get any errors. If you were using this token to give out to other people to work on your project, you definitely wouldn't wanna give them access to everything. So I'm just doing this because it's only for me. Okay, and then you can click on the generate token link. Now this token you see here, you don't wanna give this out to just anybody. I'm letting you see it on the screen because I'm gonna delete it and create a new one right after this. But you wanna save this token because after you close this screen, you're not gonna see it on here again. So save that somewhere for the future, but also right now, copy that to your clipboard or you can click the little icon next to it to copy it. Now to set this token in source tree, let's go back here. Up in the top right corner, you can click the settings button. Now we already have this remote GitHub one set up from earlier with the link to our repository. I'm just gonna actually remove this one and type it all in manually and show you how this link name is built. Okay, so we click settings and now we wanna add a remote here. So let's click add. Remote name, I'm just gonna put as GitHub. And now what you want to do for the URL is you want to put HTTPS colon backslash and then you want to put in your token right here. So paste that token in and then you want to put an at sign github.com slash username. So mine's Metal Storm Games. This is just your, your username in your Git page or GitHub, so if we look here, Metal Storm Games, and then we wanna put the repo name after it. So if we just go back to our repositories, this is the one I created, which is this one right here. So if you look here, this URL, it's actually just the same one that's shown in your Git. Just before the GitHub part, we put our, our personal access token with an at sign before it. And everything else should stay the same. So let's just hit OK on this. OK again. And now I'm going to try to do a push. I just need to check here. We hit push. And this got pushed. So it does seem a bit complicated. You can actually set it up where you use that token for all of your, your repos in source tree. I usually just do it for the individual one because I don't put too many of my projects on GitHub. I usually just keep them local, but this works perfectly for me. Now to verify this actually did go through, let's go back to our GitHub here. Let's go to our repositories okay, and let's click on this project here and now we see the first commit so this actually copied all of the the commits from our source tree and just to show that this is the case let's go back to source tree here let's click on commit so there's no changes yet let's go back to our game project in unity this is going to make some changes so i'll add in a cube duplicate it we'll move this around Control S to save the scene. Now go back to source tree and it updated. I'm gonna stage those. I'm just gonna call this second commit. 
added cubes. Let's commit this. And you can see here, it actually does give you a check that automatically pushes the change to GitHub. I'm not gonna check that. I'm just gonna commit this. And now if we look here, so you see, second commit, it added the cube and it shows it's part of the master branch, but it does not show the GitHub. So this means it hasn't been pushed yet. And you can actually see on push, it has a number one here. There's one pending change that has to be pushed. So if we look on our GitHub, if we refresh it, so we still only have the one here, but if we go back, we hit push. It's already checked still. We don't have to check it. Let's hit push. And now it says it's part of GitHub's master as well as our local master. So now let's go back to GitHub. I'm gonna refresh this screen. And now we see second commit added cubes. Okay, so that added that. And if we look here, it'll show us the total commits here. So we have two commits. If I click on those, I can view the details. So it's very similar to using source tree, but now we have it set up remotely as well. So that's all there is to it. it. It does seem a bit confusing, but just remember all you have to do is in front of your URL for your project here. So if we go to Strauss, and if I click this code button, you can see here's our URL. So all you have to do to use that personal access token is right here in front of GitHub, just paste it in and then put an at sign before GitHub. And that's gonna use that token for you. Okay, and one last thing I wanna show you here is what's called cloning. So it's very common on GitHub to use public projects where you'll, you'll be following a tutorial and they'll provide source code for a project and you wanna download it to try it. So I'm gonna show that with an example he, I have here for one of my course videos. If we go to the Super Bomber project, I have it here. If we just go to the code, Here's the URL, so if I copy this, now we can go back into source tree. Let's click the plus here for a new new uh, repository. And it gives an option here for clone, right at the top. So if I click clone, it's gonna ask for a path. So I'm gonna paste that in. And see here, it did a check. It says this is a Git repository, so it knows what it is. And then it asks you where you wanna save it. It'll give the folder. So I'm gonna actually just change that. I'm gonna to go to my Unity Projects folder and I'm just gonna create a new one. I am gonna call this, let's call this Super Bomber. That's what that project is called. Select folder. So now it has it here. It gives you all the info. We don't need any advanced stuff or anything. If I just hit clone, now it's gonna actually download that whole project and create the file and folder structure for us and copy all of the, the version control settings here. So let's see here, we have the project. Let's go to the, the under branches, let's select main. And here's the initial commit for it. So this is gonna let you download any project you're working on here and create it on your computer. So now all you would have to do is go to Unity and just open that project. Okay, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions with that, just leave a comment below and I'll try to help out the best I can. But it's one of those things where you just need to kind of start playing with it now. Um, the trickiest part I found on here was getting that personal access token working. But all you have to do is put it in the URL of your repository when you put it in the remote tab. Okay, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.